How's it going, everybody? Um, thanks for tuning in to my first Lightroom tutorial on IGTV. I appreciate it. Today, we're going to learn how to edit this image right here. Uh, it's probably already up on my page, so go check it out. Uh, zoom in, do whatever you got to do if you want to get a better look at it. But uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Um, I like to use Lightroom as a tool to uh, help me organize uh, a lot of my photos. So if you notice over here on the left side of the screen, I have all these options. All these are different shoots. Like I have Eric's uh, S15 here. This was a model that I used. Um, her name is Brittany. Uh, shot her alongside the car for a little bit, but um, this is Eric's S15. So, you know, I use Lightroom as a tool to keep a lot of my uh, shoots and everything organized. So it's just easy for me to go back and like, if I wanted to edit something old, I could easily just go back and attack that with no problem. So. Uh, in April 14th of this year, 2020, I shot Tanner's GTI and Blake's Camaro. Um, so jumping back into this shoot here, and we'll go back over to the photo. I think it was number 79. Yes, here it is. All right. So here we are. This is the photo that we're going to edit today. And so, like I said, we'll just jump straight into it. The first thing I like to do, and this is the very first thing I like to do, I go up here and I click on um, this circle. It's right next to the brush tool in Lightroom. And we'll just go ahead and we will make an ellipse circle and just place it not just comfortably right over the right over the car. And we'll hit O on our keyboard. I don't know what it is if you use a Windows computer. Um, I'm basing everything that I'm going to be telling you guys off of Mac. So we're going to hit O on our keyboard and that will pull up this red layer and it'll tell us exactly like what is going to be affected by this mask that we're putting on the image. But I'm going to go over here to the right and hit invert and that's going to make uh, the focus be on the center of the, the mask. Uh, we're gonna hit O, take that red off so we can actually see what we're doing. And I don't know why this is, but it normally just goes ahead and puts, um, like, it'll put a, like a preset amount, like a preset whatever on here. In this case, it's an exposure of, you know, one stop up, but I always go and clear that off. So right now we're flat, okay? So I don't, uh, so going back to the, uh going back to the exposure we're going to bump this up about half a stop okay and then i like to take the highlights we're going to raise them up a little bit not too much probably about 50 or so and then you're going to take our shadows and we're going to bring them up just a very small amount and it's a little cold in the center of the photo so i'm going to warm it up just a little bit just like that so i think that's a pretty good spot so another thing I like to do is right here where it says clarity, uh, I'll take the clarity and I'll bump it up a little bit, maybe like eight or nine or so, something like that. And I only do this a small amount when I have the mask um, present on the image because I just want to give the car itself a little boost of clarity. I'm gonna apply clarity to the entire image anyway, but I like to give the car itself a small boost. So, uh, like I said, I'm gonna put nine there and then we're gonna drop the texture just a tad. So maybe negative 12 as I have it in this case. All right, so I think we're good here. We're gonna turn the mask off and then now I'm gonna start to edit the image as a whole. All right, so uh, we're gonna turn these highlights up. Uh, again, probably about 50, 53, somewhere around that area. And I'm gonna bring these shadows up just a little bit and then I will warm the image up just some. All right, so then we're gonna exit out of here. I like to go to the HSL slash color section on this. Um, and I like to tweak a lot of these settings here. I normally don't mess with the hue too much unless I'm trying to get crazy. Um, or like if I'm dealing with a lot of like the sky, cause then I'm just messing with the blues and it's not really affecting the rest of the image too much. 
Um, so in this case, right here in the window, we do have a little bit of blue. So I'm gonna play with it. Um, and you know, the, the car is reflecting some of the sun or some of the sky anyway, so it will reflect like off a lot of this, like anywhere on the car that is like reflecting the sky in that case. And I don't really like what that did. Um, but we can turn that down. So if we go back to flat, this is what it looks like, right? And I always like swing it from side to side just to see exactly like what it's looking like. I prefer this darker end over here in this window. I'm not really seeing too much of an uh, of a change that he did on the car, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But right here for the aqua, I put it up on 100 because I noticed that it affected the window a lot more. So if we go back to zero, look here it turned a little bit more aqua teal greenish whatever i don't really like that so i'm going to go back put it on 100 i think that's good it looks good to me so I, that's what we're going with and we'll test this blue out see what that's doing i don't really care for that i'm gonna leave that right there at 100 because i think that looks good all right so over here on luminance this is really like where i mess with a lot of the colors and stuff um so red is a good one uh, as you can see a lot of the times in the image, if you know anything about um, the color spectrum, you mess with the reds, you're a lot of time gonna mess with the oranges and the yellows, that's just how it goes. More oranges than anything else, but yeah. So, I want the calipers right here to pop a little bit, and I see we got that stop sign over there in the background, but that's not really important to me. So, I'm gonna turn this up just a little, about 40, and um, then we're gonna move on, because there's really not any other red in the image. Um, so if you notice down here on the ground, we have some orange, um, and you'll get a lot of orange, especially like this time of day. Cause I think it was around like we shot this in April. So maybe around seven o'clock or so, uh, the sun was starting to go down. So I will slide this from side to side, see what it's doing. And I don't really like that dark look on the ground. So I'm going to bump this up a little bit just to give it a little bit of fade and we'll bring some more contrasting color back into it when we go into the saturation. All right, now for the yellows, again, like I said, the red, orange, and yellows are all sort of tied together, so they're all gonna be affected a little bit. Um, but in this case, I'll drop the yellows about negative 17 there, because I think that looks good to me. Um, I'm gonna see the greens. The green isn't really affected too much, but since it is a little bit noticeable in the back, in these areas I'm just gonna leave it at a hundred just because the green is very minimal in the image there's no green on the car it's like the lowest affecting thing possible right now all right so going back to the aqua uh, I like the way that looks I like this bright reflection on the window right here and it brings a little bit more of the sky in there so I'm gonna leave that at a hundred in here okay this is heavily affecting the car so obviously there's more blue than aqua in the sky or at least that's the way the computer sees it so um, if you notice when I slide this from negative to negative 100 to 100 um, the car is drastically affected because like I said earlier the car is reflecting a lot of the sky and you can see that from right over here in the highlights right along the side of the car the window etc um, so negative 100 looks pretty bad. Uh, that's taken like all the blue out of the image, all the blue out of the reflection that's on the car from the sky. Um, I don't really like that at all. And in this case, since the sky isn't actually in the photo and we don't have to worry about it, I'm gonna bump that all the way up because I like that white that it's putting on the car. I think it's a good, healthy, like really bright, clean white and it just makes the car look um, a lot better to me and it minimizes a lot of those reflections reflections are like depends on how depending on how you use them reflections are positive and they can be negative uh, it really just depends but for me particular and on this image I'm gonna raise them. all right moving on to the purples not really doing too much for me I see a little bit on this back wall right here but it's nothing to be concerned about uh, the magentas usually is not a uh, doesn't really affect a whole lot of anything and that's for me that applies to like almost any image that I deal with all right clicking on saturation I'm gonna bump up the red just a little bit we're gonna bump up the orange because I love that 
color on the ground. I don't want to put it too much because a lot of this brown back here is being affected by it. So I'm going to put it probably around 3940. And then the yellows, let's see what that does. That's just emphasizing the ground, but I like the yellows more in this case because it's not overemphasizing the orange that's on the ground. It's just putting a little bit of warmth in it and it's not affecting the wood in the background as much as it is the ground. <clears throat> All right, so moving on, we got the greens. Uh, we could turn the greens up. I'll just put them right there around 49 uh, for the aqua. Not really seeing too much of a difference. I think it's affecting the headlights more than anything else. So I'll put that around 20, 22. Uh, the blues will drop this down. Yeah, I don't really care for the blues a whole lot in this image. So I'm gonna drop those down to negative 100. I'm just gonna completely try to take the blue, all the blue out of the reflection of the car. Cause if you notice, if I put it all the way up on 100, yeah, we still have this window over here to worry about. You know, the metal and stuff looks really nasty right now. And you can see a little bit of it down here in the uh, in the ground. <clears throat> and uh, it's affecting the wheels a little bit too. But like I said, I really like the white on this car. It's very healthy white, clean white. So I'm dropping it all the way down. There's still a little bit of blue in the window. Nothing really to worry about. If we wanted to get rid of that completely, I could just drop the aqua all the way down. Which, now that I did it, I think I might do that and just leave it the way it is. Um purple magenta uh, I'm gonna drop that purple all the way down just so we can clean this wall up magenta like I said doesn't really affect many photos I deal with too much so I'm just gonna drop it down to negative 100 just in case there's anything that I don't want there I dealt with it already all right split toning and you know guys normally I don't go in this order but just to keep it so that everybody understands I'm just sort of going down the list here um, so I like to play around with this. This is where I get to get creative and I get to just experiment. Um, so we do like a lot of the, you know, the, the warm tones in this image, right? Or at least I do, because it's sunset. I want it to look like as accurate to like the time of day it was as possible, even though I'm gonna manipulate the image. So we'll put some warmth in it and I'll put, I'll go about here maybe. All right, and then I'll take the saturation and dial that down. We'll put a little bit of warmth in it. So I got it around eight saturation. For the shadows, we'll cool the shadows off. Shadows are normally like this, but I like to put a little bit of mood into the images. And when you throw some blue in the shadows, it really helps, like right here. You can see how that really makes the image pop. Turn that, um, turn that off. So this is with it off, and then this is with it back on. Okay, that was a little slow, but there you go. Um, so going back to the saturation, we're gonna turn this down again. And you know, I, I try to keep this as minimal as possible. So I got it on five for saturation for the shadows and we're gonna exit out of there. So turning that off and on, it's gonna be minimal, but it is a noticeable difference, at least for me right here on this screen. So this is with it off and there it is. It's back with it on. All right, so detail, uh, using this little box right here, you can scroll around and you know make sure that you're looking at something that's actually in focus. If we tried to focus on the back of the car, it wouldn't be as sharp as it would in the front because that's not where I focus the image. So right here on the passenger side headlight, this is a good spot to look at. I'm gonna bump this up to about 60, and then if we hold option on our keyboard, we can slide this and there we go, it was a little late, but we can slide this and um, the mask will change as we go further up toward 100 on the, um, the lever. And this will tell us what is actually in focus or like what the computer is actually trying to focus on for the slider. So if we keep going right there, try to get as little as possible, like I mean, I. I tend to go higher up in the numbers on the mask because I just want the the computer to add most of that detail and the sharpening to the car itself because that is the focus of the image. All right, so I don't really mess with anything else down here. Sometimes I do, but that's when I'm getting super detailed and I'm not going to do that today. 
lens correction not gonna mess with it too much uh, I always check this box remove chromatic aberration maybe the computer can do a little something even though I don't have the lens information in there um, well let's see well uh, yeah I, I guess I did have an automatic lens on here because it's telling me all of my settings up here so let's see I'll select that and see what happens it changes the image a little bit so as you can see right there it just bumped it up some um, I'm gonna leave it I think it looks good it probably straightened out some edges for me um, transform I don't mess with effects I don't mess with too much but calibration so this is a unique area of um, the image itself uh, so sliding these bars from side to side you can see how that's affecting it and this is the tint right um, in this case I think red looks a little bit better on that spectrum so I'm gonna put maybe about eight on the tint there maybe a little bit less we'll put five that looks good and then we'll slide the hue bar for the red primary from side to side I like a little bit more of that orange in there I'm gonna put that at about 11 I'll try this green as well see how that's going I like a little bit positive on the green so I'll put that at about five too I don't want to bump that up too much and then blue is the heavy one right normally for cars blue is very I mean you shoot cars outside so the sky is gonna affect the car in most cases almost every single time um, so we'll slide this from side to side see what we get and I'm liking the negative side of the blues a little bit more and with me that's usually the case but that's just how I look at it um, so we'll put that about negative seven all right so I'm gonna go back to the tone curve right here I don't like to make my tone curve super crazy I keep them simple again I'll bump the highlights some and then I'm gonna drop this down and that is about it that's like the bulk of like how I like to do my tone curves sometimes you know I can go in here and mess with the reds the greens like just make it all crazy but that's if I'm trying to get creative in this tutorial I'm not really doing that so all right so back over here to the basic edit part I'm gonna hold option again and I'm going to drop our whites a little bit probably about negative 34 and we're gonna take our blacks and I'm gonna drop those to actually yeah I'm gonna drop those about negative 12 I hold option because normally like when you hold option it'll only uh, highlight those spots so since I have my shadows in the positive it's not really gonna do anything to the blacks right now but for whites you can still see it so you have some of those like if I slide this up you'll see more whites and whites pop out right but that's not what I'm gonna do uh, so command Z just to get rid of that um, now that I dropped the whites a little bit I'm gonna take these highlights bump them back up and I actually might raise those whites back to negative 10 I think I might drop them too much alright so since earlier in the video like one of the first things I did was put the uh, the clarity I bumped the clarity up a little bit when I was in the bubble right here um, I'm going to actually bump it up some more so now when I do this when I'm out of the bubble I usually get a little bit more aggressive with the clarity so here's about 34 right so here's before okay yeah it's a little slow there's before and then here's after um, I don't know how much you guys can tell on the on IGTV but you can obviously see a difference here and when I post this image later today you'll be able to um, you'll be able to see it so I don't think this video is gonna go up the same day I post the photo but yeah you'll see it if like after you click out of this video go to my page zoom in on this video you'll be able to see a lot of that detail and it makes it worth it in my case all right so for saturation I'll drop that negative 10 and then I bump up the vibrance I like to do that because I don't like to over just saturate the image and I know that like all the all it does is just boost the max saturation without going overboard uh, in the vibrance but I don't like to do too much I like to drop the saturation a little bit just because for me I think it just keeps better colors overall for both screen and print all right so 
here we are this is before so we started here and then we ended up with this uh, this pretty simple edit you know like I said I wasn't gonna do anything too crazy I just wanted to give you guys like a, a brief like rundown about how I sort of approach this type of thing um, you know if I wanted to I could probably zoom in over here and just to zoom in a little bit more we'll go to three one and you know you could take this brush this is not the best way to do this obviously the best way to do this would be to go into Photoshop and I'll save that for another tutorial but um, we'll just drag this over a little bit and just sort of get these wheels you can't see anything but I'm gonna hit Z uh, circle or O again on Mac and that'll pull up that little red thing so we can see what we're masking and just try to get a little as much as as much of the wheel as I possibly can and I'll close this I'll back out a little bit I hate that I can't I don't know how to move around on here when I'm actually working with the brush tool but I'm gonna click on that circle again and then it's the same mask so both this wheel and that wheel will be affected by the same thing so I'm gonna just lightly draw on this wheel again just try to get as much try to get not too much over the edge I think I just went a little bit over right there go down the center just get all of that if you hold option uh, it'll pull up the negative uh, brush tool so I'll just brush right here on the edge and try to take some of that off the tire there all right cool so we'll hit circle again and like I said earlier it already bumps it up one stop I don't know why it does that I don't like that um, but I'm just gonna bump up the shadows a little bit Put some contrast in it we're gonna bump up those highlights probably a bunch and uh, i don't need any clarity on the wheels and we'll probably take the exposure and put it up a tenth of a stop and we'll close the brush tool zoom back out just to put a little extra detail in the wheels and i think that looks pretty good i mean we got some scuff marks down here in the front i'm not going to worry about it too much you know, like I said, that's just a basic edit, but I appreciate you guys checking this out. If there's anything you guys actually want to see, just let me know and, you know, leave a comment on any of my posts or whatever. I'm always paying attention to that stuff. You know, if you guys are shooters, send me some images. I'll post them on my story. I'm not afraid to sh like showcase other people's work. I do it all day anyway. So just send me whatever you got, but you know, try to share this video, do whatever you can for me. I appreciate all of it. And I will see you next time. Peace.